Hello, and welcome to Mini Music Monday, on a Monday, no less. In this episode, we continue discussing the Bake Sale LP, the band Sebado's most acclaimed <laughs> LP. <laughs> Lou shares many details regarding the recording and his vibe about the record. <laughs> Go ahead, you guys, start talking about it again. Thank you for listening. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bake Sale special Bake Sale. This is okay. We're actually recording this on Friday. Yeah, and it's actually the a 30th, very special day. It turns the, out it's the thirtieth anniversary of the record being released. Bake we had sale. we had no Bake idea. <laughs> to recap, is Bake that Sale number four? Adele and Lou began ranking mm -hmm. the songs on the Bake Sale LP. Adele, from her favorite to her least favorite. Number one was Careful, her favorite record. Excuse me, her favorite song <laughs> on Bake Sale. Record. Number two, Not a Friend. Number three, Skull. Number four, Got It. Number five, Not to Amuse It. <laughs> Number six, Magnet's Coil. Number seven, License to Confuse. Number eight, S Soup. Number nine, Rebound. She will continue downwards on this list with number 10 very shortly. M meaning now. Okay. So where, where are you at? So this is your list. So I'm at number 10 then. So we have one, two, three, four, six songs left. So this is your 10th favorite song on the record. Yes. Okay. And I, and I want to clarify again that it's like least favorite. It, it's just, they're all good. It's a fine record. It's a fine record. Some, some people apparently want to have it on a, like an island. Like a desert island record? Yeah, like they, they have nothing else but the bake sale record or maybe ten, wow. like nine other records and that's okay. all they can listen to huh. for the rest of their life uh I, hmm. no thank you desert island yeah discs. i mean hmm. i'd rather I'd... hear the ringing in my ears <laughs> and, and birds <sighs> and the the and the tide uh oh, yeah. the tide and you because we'll be trapped there together yes that'd be great let's yeah. do it we okay. can make up songs on tree trunks mm-hmm I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. That would be Still wild. Me. That's Liter my desert island. Literally. Um, okay. So number 10 for me. And I was like giggling because last week when you gave me your list and you were coming up from bottom to top. Yep. I started with the bottom. You started with the ass, didn't I you? I did. I started on the ass end started of the record. started on the ass end of the record. Lose dirt to diamonds. Um, Not the most healthy way to go about it. <laughs> Shocking. Back to front. No. You're doing it the right way. You're going front to back. So my number 10 is together or alone. And I was giggling because I believe that's also your number 10. So our 10, I think, is the same. This is where our list, our lists intersect. Yeah, they touch. They touch. They have, they, they, they have sex. Boom, yeah. right there I, on I Together played, Alone. I played that song for episode number two. Recently, right? Two, like or... Bake Sale 2. Or mm. th maybe, yeah, I think Bake Sale 2. Was it? Okay. I think so. We ended up talking about Carlos Santana <laughs> for a very long time after I know, that. we got a little, that was Bake Sale 3, but yeah, we got a little distracted. Um, that's what happens, you know, with, he's, he's magic. Um, so yeah, Together Alone. And I... I like that song. I, I mean, it's again, it's like it's not bad. I, I feel bad putting it all the way down at 10. But, oh, I know what I wanted to say about this song. Mm -hmm. I had a thought about this song and I wrote it in my mm -hmm. little notebook. To me, I think what I felt about Together Alone is it sounds like a Lou Barlow solo song. It sounds like something that would maybe be like on when you're really early kind of experimental almost like before you even had a girlfriend i know you wrote this after you had a girlfriend but it feels very like early right after i had been dumped already yeah by my first girlfriend. i know like to me it feels like lou barlow projecting into the future about a future breakup oh, that's you know sweet. like an imaginary relationship an imaginary drama that you had like in high school and you wrote the song and if only i could write about imaginary dramas you did you wrote that fantastic song um, about like your imaginary future woman when you were younger, right? What's that great oh. song? Oh, uh, I believe in fate. Yes. Oh, okay. Moving on. That's on the that's on the weed forest and tape. 
Oh, we'll see. This is, you know, fair I have, enough. Okay. It sounds like a solo right, solo song. I play it to all. The, I play it all the time mm-hmm. to this day. I love playing it solo. It's great. Yeah. Acoustic. There you go. Yep. Do you want to hear my number eleven? Yes, I want you to keep going until okay. you're done. Give up. Give up. Yep. Number okay. eleven. Give up. And you know, it's kind of a guy song. Kind of a yeah. Kind of a dude tune. It kind of is. It's true. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. Number twelve for me is uh, drama mean. Drama mean. It says drama mine. Yeah. You know, it's a little yeah. Jason's witty way. I like that drama of mine. <laughs> yeah, drum. I it's but that it's is so brilliant. Mean, right? That song is so brilliant. I mean, if I could, I really like that. Song I'll talk too. more about this. But when Jason sort of unveiled those songs, because we let him, he was alone in the studio with Tara Jane mm-hmm. O'Neill and uh, our engineer Tim O'Hare, and they all kind of hatched those tunes together, like Jason's, um, the four songs that he did with Tara. Was it four? Let's see. Do I have to count this now? Anyway. Somebody on YouTube said it was three. I don't know if they're right, but... Probably. So, um, but boy. Yeah. We were like dumbfounded. I, I really like that song too. And again... But it's witty because Dramamine is obviously, it's a medication, an over-the-counter right. medication for for seasickness, motion sickness. Most motion sickness. And he creates this sort of motion in the song and the, the stop start, the da 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 And it's like the, he just creates this, this motion. Swirl. He creates this swirl with the riff mm-hmm. and then speaks of being, you know, uneasy in this sort of, I need some Dramamine. His voice is sexy as in that song. crazy as your scene. Yeah, the way it's sung. I mean, it's Don't such... Don't you think? It, yes. That one's a little more on the sexy side. It's so good. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful. That song is like... It's, I mean... I'm guessing that must be up on your top then. Okay, so... Uh, okay, so that was my... I'll leave my last three. You tell me your next Are you sure? Should I do my three yeah, now? Yeah. Okay, all right. So where did I stop? So then you w- would have stopped at... Wait, so you would have, you would have. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing. <laughs> trying to, like, Why would you I'm, do that? So I'm doing an ascending from, so order. So whatever She's your doing top descent. six is, like, so number okay. six, I guess, for did you. I, did, I, did I, my seven was careful, ascending was careful, which is yes, amazing. And that was right. your number one. That's my number one. That was your number one. And it's, it's really good. Hmm. That careful, it's, it's actually a band. See, reco- now I'm thinking, do I want to move? It's a band recording, and it was it was really good. And I think actually Bob Fay sort of made a mistake on that, mm-hmm. where he just started hitting the the kick drum during a verse or something, but it worked. It was like this mistake that totally worked and add to the dynamics of the song. I also just really like that title, and I like the dram, uh, drama mind title, and I like okay. not to amuse it title so, number six in my ascending order. <laughs> yeah, towards number one. Yes, the diamond. A vague sale. Okay. License to Confuse. So, see, you like, yeah. It's ingra- it's, it's, it, that I'm song mine was I, seven. It's License to Confuse was yeah, seven that, for that me. That song actually, I mean, I'm still like, oh, that's pretty good. It holds up. Kind of holds up. It's it's cool. It's short. It really reflects. I was listening to so much like 60s garage rock at that time. And then also like it did, that was when John Davis and yes, I were hooking were up. Talking. As I said last time, so yes. must move on. Number five, mm-hmm. Rebound. That also sounds good because the guitar sounds so good in it. Such a fun song. It's a really short song. I went over this already. I tried to expand it at one point. I, the wait, second I session. Want, can I ask about Rebound for yes. a second? Oh, please, yeah. Um, I love the video for Rebound. Oh, you do? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I think that video is so fun. It's like oh. talk about playful. Yeah, it was all recorded. We recorded. We we captured it on tour, and some of it is using an eight millimeter. It's Film really, camera. it's, it's got a lot of, it, it just feels like, I, don't I had a, I had that's a, a really fun, that's a fun, fun video. I had little concepts around, a lot of it is cut from our, just our tour footage. Mm-hmm. Um, um, some really sweet, like. <laughs> so is it from the tour where you guys were recording this, like leading up to? Or... No. Oh. No, I, oh God, I think it was just shortly. At, that actually was made from tour footage from, F- from the Bake Sale tour. Oh, it's footage from the, the big video yeah, came out later. Yeah, because we were actually mm-hmm. we were putting out singles and they, they were coming out and we had videos on MTV. First, we did Skull, which we did in our hometown of Westfield, my hometown. Excuse me. <laughs> I was like, speak for yourself, sir. My hometown. Your hometown. Jason uh, from Northampton. Bob mm-hmm. from Peabody, Massachusetts. And Eric Gaffney from Eric Gaffney from Northampton, Massachusetts, as well. Right. Born in born in Cambridge. Uh, Cambridge, Boston area. Uh-huh. Like Jason, too. Actually, you know what? Jason, Eric, John Davis, 
all born in Boston, and, wow. for, and their first homes were in Cambridge. Weird. Okay. Yep. Um, so, so I just want to say I like that video too. Well, well, thank you. You're welcome. Sk- um, Skull's pretty cute too. Cute I had a little video. Yeah, I had those were concept both. I thought for the skull video, I wanted to be carrying an amp through the entire video. Yeah, I always feel like you're suffering in your old videos. You know, it's oh, I like, like it. I think it's hilarious. Yeah. And then, uh, no, absolutely. And then the <laughs> I always like to drive that home. And then the and and, and, and case in point mm-hmm. in the rebound video, I wanted to have a sequence where I was being beaten up by young children, by kids. I don't remember that. Well, there's a part you can't see. It's a very kinetic video. There's a lot of, it's a lot of jump cuts, a lot of quick stuff. What kids were doing that to you? It was like in a park in Chapel Hill, I think, North Carolina. I was like, can you guys just Did you know these kids? Yeah. I was like, come on. I think they were fans or maybe they were just a bit younger. Okay. They were fans. So they were younger. They were like, like teenagers. And I'm like, you guys beat me up. Just like, just beat me (laughs) up. Hey, if you were a kid and you fake beat up Lou in uh in the video raise yeah your, raise like your I hand. Had a, let us you know, know they didn't they didn't really lean into it <laughs> I, I told him like come on bring it on hurt kick me, me. <laughs> hurt me <laughs> but uh yeah so they kind of and then it ends with me my glasses coming off my face um anyway so thank you i'm glad you like that video because you're not a fan of all of my videos and we can get to that later mm. we'll get to that later so uh <laughs> so the rebound yeah rebound so yeah, rebound was, was your okay Number five. Five, five was Number rebound. four, leading up to my top three, yep. Dramamine. Okay. And for all the reasons that I've already described. Yeah. I just, I just really... Mm, so that one... That one... Really gets you. I really... Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Those were... Hearing that song for the first time was among the most... Uh, I don't know. I, I really... It was one of the best experiences in my life, I would say. Where, you Where were, just, were you when you heard it? I, we were sitting in the studio. Where? Which studio? Fort Apache Fort Studios, Apache. Cambridge, Massachusetts. It was during um, the first sessions for the Bake Sale record, which were probably in the fall or early winter of 1993. Mm-hmm. We had a follow-up session in January of 1994, but this was from the original sessions when we did Rebound and mm. License to Confuse, and most of the record was done. In, and this is with Tim. With Tim O'Hare. Okay, Tim O'Hare. So... Yeah, so four is drama mean. So now. Okay, so then my 13. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's confusing for people. My 13 is. Da, 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 Mystery Man. Hey, yesterday. Uh huh. You asked me to play the song. I did. Yeah. Because I like this song, yeah, but it. it uh, Oh, okay. I had some thoughts about Mystery Man before you uh, before you grace us with it. Into it. Okay. You're going to play it. Lou's going to play I'm it. I'm going to play it. Um, okay. Can I say this about it? I It got lower on it because I don't want to use the word lazy. Okay. But the lyrics to me feel so you- that it's like it's not much of a stretch like the lyrics and stuff like i feel like i know exactly what you're thinking and what you're talking about how would you know i don't know all right well, tell t- me what it's about i'll tell you after i play it how about that it I, I, you know maybe it's not maybe it's maybe it's a mystery <laughs> Ernest little lover, little mystery man Nothing thrills you like denial There's nothing wrong with the need to please And children know no shame Baby on your bended knees And she'd love to play your game She's a curious girl, easily swayed by a force of will, empty to be filled with the hunger for more. Oh, shit. (laughs) What? What if time denies you the key to your fulfillment fails? Again on a boat that sinks as it sails Stand shoulders above her Pick her up when you love her 
her up at right when you use her I need it so bad you abuse her But don't leave her alone Cause soon she'll be tasting the sweet unknown If it beats her candy, she'll follow it home So make your claim She's legally yours if she shares your name But don't lose control Cause you'll scare her away Go on and beg her that mess up Got it sounded really nervous. good you should uh you should you should incorporate that one into your solo shows maybe i do people request it i'll play it oh they do yeah hmm. i feel like i've never heard you sing so, that one live do you want me to tell you what i want to know I, if you can tell me well it's for the guy who uh it's kind of it's uh the song is a little cringe yeah because it's directed towards the guy that my first girlfriend hooked up with when she broke up with me and triggered all the songs, you know, Soul and Fire. Oh. Yeah, it's it's for, for him, who was my lawyer. Oh. Who was negotiating my settlement with Dinosaur Jr. for some some royalties that I hadn't been paid. And I went on a really long Sebado tour, like a month long Sebado tour. Like okay. this was a hardcore Sebado tour. One full month, Eric, Jason, and I in a minivan playing like really, it was not a successful tour. It was a hard tour. And when I got about a week before I got back home, I realized that my girlfriend was um, with someone else. And when I got home, I, I found out they were actually engaged. So that's my song for him. He was 36 at the time, which seemed super old. Mm. And we were like 23, mm -hmm. 24. So I wrote that song. It's a, it's a, it's a very, I don't know. It feels like it, it's kind of, it's, it's one of my meaner songs. It's aggressive. It's an aggressive song. It's a little sexist, I would say. It's a mm -hmm. little... I don't know, maybe not sexist, but it's like, it's a bit of an old school, she's mine kind of song. You know, it's weird. So okay. what did you think? I mean, what so are you... So are you probably wondering why I thought it was like... Yeah, what do you... I didn't want to say lazy in that, like, but I think... I'm not, I'm not going to retract that in the sense that, like, it probably wasn't too difficult for you to obviously articulate these things. You know what I mean? You had very strong feelings. It's like, I... I think it's one of my, I mean, those words came to me quick. No, no, they did. I, I, maybe lazy isn't the right word. I just mean it I seemed thought, I thought it was a bit of an, easy. I thought it was pretty inspired to me. I mean, I always thought that was a maybe pretty good. Maybe we need to edit this. No, uh-uh. <laughs> I'm not editing this. I I think <laughs> what it was is, and, and I'll say this as I was wrong, I thought it was you talking about yourself. No. Yeah, I thought it was you directed at yourself and kind of like being hard on yourself like as it's a good guess because I often did. I often yes. was the target of my own songs. That's a fair guess, but not that tune. I, that tune is fully. Wow, you were like pointed, like sir. Pointed. This is for you. Fuck you. Yeah. I mean, at this one, I'd already. 
That actually makes me have a lot more respect for this song. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. It's like now a, I'm like, it's yeah, like a, mystery it's man. Kind of, it's kind of like a nasty breakup song, as if if That's like a true. like a really old school good song. Would you even wrote it. write that song today? No, because yeah, it's it's, it's, it's kind of mean. I don't mm-hmm. know. It's kind of a mean song, mean and it's also like song. yeah, yeah. It's kind of a mean manly song. Uh huh. It's kind of a swaggery tune. It's it not is, really yeah. Um, it's not really. But it was who I was. It was, that was absolutely, I was a, I was an aggressive person back then. I was a real mix of like passive. (laughs) Can you imagine? (laughs) Gen X kid. Uh, Sensitive asshole. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sensitive asshole. Like a, you know, ex uh, hardcore guy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, You know, I was led into music through aggressive. But who would still cry on TV, you know? Yeah. Cry on TV. Didn't you? Everyone always mentions that, that you cried on TV. I don't want to talk about that. Oh. Well, maybe we'll talk but about did you? Hey, we'll talk about that when we talk about the harmacy. I still har- have never seen that, but. Uh, maybe when we do the harmacy episodes, we can, okay. we can actually revisit that. that. Okay. And I can crawl into a hole while you watch it. Oh, God. Cool. I, uh, <laughs> so, Mystery Man, I thought was you talking about yourself. And this was like, my interpretation was, the reason why, to me, it seemed like maybe not articulating right, like that it was easy for you to write it or something is it seemed like it was like well-tread territory where you're like, oh, here I am again. Like I thought it was kind of like a Catholic guilt thing about you discovering your own sexuality and like maybe, I don't know, masturbating and feeling guilty and like discovering porn and just sort of like, it, to me, it had this sort of like Actually, guilty aspect to it. Can too? I say that when Bake Sale you know came I mean? around, I think I worked out my last bits of that on the bubble, bubble and scrape record. There's a song called Homemade, which is about me jerking off to porn, <laughs> getting high and jerking off to porn. Mm-hmm. That was one of the last sort of vestiges of my Catholic guilt. I think by the, the really great thing about the, the Bake Sale period was that I really felt free. Mm. You know, it was like I had this thing going with John Davis, the full complosion, the Sebado thing. We were all on the same page, so to speak. Mm-hmm. You know, Jason, uh, Bob Fay, and I. Um, and it, it was just a really productive time, and it was mm-hmm. really positive. And it seemed to be like everybody was kind of in the same spot. I wonder so, what uh, what the listeners think of Mystery Man. That's interesting. Well, you said that somebody thought Someone it was the best Someone said it one. was their first... So. Where are we okay. now? Okay. Wow. Well, thank you for discussing that in detail. Boy, and I played it. And you played it. Yes. So what did you think, though, of my interpretation of it? That's that's fair. I would do something like that. I would <laughs> self-direct it that way, but not that. That's not that's not what happened. That was. I like a very. I like knowing person. the um, the the truth. That's interesting. I feel like look. I'm, look, I'm kind of the way I'm sitting right I now. Know, I know you're like, almost swaggering through I'm, this. I got the mystery man swag. I'm like. Mm. I don't know. Some guy like stole my girlfriend, so I wrote a song about him. <laughs> Very pointed. Stole. So, yeah, stole. As if that's possible. No one can be no, stolen, guys. she's not stolen. I mean, yeah. I, I think that's one thing about it is like, look, she just wanted, I mean, like, that's what I think of now when I, I'm like, come on. Mm-hmm. She left on her own volition. You right. Know, like, and you're trying to, like, paint it out to be this childlike. Mm-hmm. It's like, no, she was a, she was a grown, grown-ass grown woman. Made a decision. She wanted to hook up with a lawyer, and she didn't want to be with a deadbeat musician. Myself, at that point. I wasn't really producing much. Anyway. Right. Yeah. Well, you know. it's the youthful kind of right, rage and confusion about that. Yeah. It's like they stole them. It's like, eh, that's yeah. just, mm-hmm. I, I have no patience for that anymore. But number 14 I have is Temptation Tide. Okay. So because for me, I was listening to that song and I like the song, but I feel like it's a shoegaze song and it belongs on like a shoegaze yeah, record. Just, well, you said that you said like, it doesn't sound like it belongs on the record, but all the previous and maybe even the Sebado records after this were many of the songs don't sound like they'd be on the same record. And so you're, but I'm like a, but I'm a new Sebado listener. So it's like, that would just be my honest feeling. Absolutely. I, yeah. That would be like. 85% of the people that hear it, you know, that would whereas, be the, people don't want, I mean, I've learned, learned the hard way, um, but I, but also I stuck by what I wanted, which was to, I, I've always wanted records to be, have a lot of different elements all You converging. said to me one time, a Sabato record is like a mixtape. It's like a mixtape. And so to that end, it fits right in. That's what it is. But really so, actually, Jason and I's songs fit so well on that record. They do. That's what, I think that's why it stuck out to me. Yeah. It's because I, 
I, that is sort of my only old Sebado record I've ever really listened to front to back, you know? Wait, wait till you hear Sebado 3, honey buns. Okay. <laughs> so I, it, it is really cohesive, you know what I it mean? Is. And then that song comes on and I'm like, oh, why is that there? This is like... So, so n- number 15 for you is... Dreams. Dreams! That's right. Yeah. That's what that was the conclusion I came to that dreams suck. Dreams is is it's the least the least rad song. Yeah. On the record. Mm, it's not my favorite. It's not the worst. It's not my favorite. Okay. Wow. <laughs> you haven't Time finished yours. Terminate. You got to do yours. This. Oh no, we can't terminate this it. We can't. Episode. This is still happening. <laughs> Will there be more? No, no. Wait, okay. <laughs> Maybe. I right. don't know. <laughs> but, but we're going to finish know. Lose List. Thank you very much for listening to okay. this. Not so many music Monday. <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. We just can't shut the musical up. musical well, wing of the Raw Impressions podcast. Okay. Dip, 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 dip. Move along. All right. Here we are. So I'm at I'm my top three. Here we go. This is the end of the episode. Yes. Okay. Top Lose three. top three. This is it. And then and you don't have to rush it because we've just now whatever. I want to hear your top three. My top three. So three. Number three, Magnus Coil. Okay. That sounds good. See the point yeah. of my this this little top fifteen of mine. Mm-hmm. My ascending top fifteen, is that these are songs that I can listen to and go like that is an that's a good recording. Uh huh. That's a good recording. That brings me to the special place when like I'm listening to something good, which is hard when I'm listening to my own music because I often hear the misses. I hear not the, not so much even just the technical misses. I just hear I'm like, is this an invo- is this like an atmospheric recording? Is this creating right. a, a space? It's like mm-hmm. good songs, like a recording of a good song. You enter the space. Yes. And it's rare for me to be to be allowed or allow myself or to really enter a space of my own song Mm. the recording of it i can certainly i'm so like that's the whole thing about this record is like i still play almost all of these songs Mm -hmm. i'm an Mm active i still engage with them actively i'm really proud of these songs yes what i'm criticizing is the textures of the recording or just you know regrets about that that kind of thing mm, okay. magnus cole sounds like perfectly just straight up bob Faye's drumming is like great and like it's, if we were so excited when we were doing this record we did it quickly we had actually practiced these songs jason had we had practiced them mm-hmm. at a loft in charlestown boston um where john maloney lived interestingly Wild. i met john maloney then and he was actually he he lived there at one point, we were practicing the songs for our bake sale sessions, upcoming uh-huh. sessions, and I saw him like, he went like this and kind of gave me a thumbs up. I'm like, wow, the cool guy at the loft gave me a thumbs oh, up. Amazing. And then I realized years later, he's like, oh yeah, I love that record, and that, which I was kind of chuffed oh. to find that out, that mm-hmm. Maloney was there. Um, but we were practicing in the loft because, uh, anyway, so <laughs> um, one of Bob Faye's ex-girlfriends lived there. So, um, yeah, so my, number two, uh, number two, got it. Uh huh. That's yeah. my number four. Such a good yeah, song. It's up there. I mean, it's see, this like, is the thing. Yeah. Got it. And number one, not to amuse it for sure. <laughs> like that, that song. See, that's really what it is. It's like mm, not to mm-hmm. amused. Got it. Dramamine. Actually, our f- top five is not that dissimilar. I mean, it's hard to see. Lo- lo- know, there's my okay. Mm. So then there's the yeah. Can you see the list? I'll put it up there. Yeah. Um, right. um, yeah. So wait, what's your number one again? Not too amused. Okay. Yeah. Not too amused. And what, again, so it's like those. What that, happened when you, when he brought that song and were you like, well, we heard all three of these songs. We heard not too amused. Got it. And drama mean drama mind all together. Like here's what Jason did in his time in the studio alone with Tara and Tim. This okay. is what he did. It's done. I don't even think there's bass on some of those songs. I mean, the guitar sound is so full. That's the other thing is like we, there's a lot of low tunings on this. The whole record is, reco- all of my songs are recorded at D sharp. And for you guitarists and peoples out there, that's like a half step down. So it's lower. It's D sharp. And my, all my, so all my songs were in D sharp. Interestingly, at the same time, full complosion songs were also at D sharp. Mm. John and I discovered. So thinking about maybe i should just get back to d sharp it seems to be a good spot Check for my, it out. my vocal i don't know why i got so attenuated over the years why i felt the need to sing i do know why why 
as we played live shows, I found that singing songs that low was not effective live. So I had to pitch everything up in order to get my voice above the band and to be heard in a live environment. Mm. So that's what I had to do. That's what mm-hmm. you had to do because it wasn't like you didn't have any monitors. You didn't have your own sound engineers. You were generally you were still just playing this punk rock club circuit where, you know, the sound was not the best. The sound could be challenging. So sometimes had, it was good. Sometimes it yes. wasn't. So mm-hmm. we, so I had to, I had, I adjusted where the song set the pitch of the songs so I could then project more and make sure that my voice could drive the, the music when we played it. Oh, Cause otherwise okay. I couldn't hear it. I couldn't hear it myself while we, cause bands are loud. Mm-hmm. Drums are loud. So loud. Amplifiers are loud. So that's it. So, well, but you still didn't say what you told me, what you thought about when you heard the song. Like, did you? I thought that Jason was a fucking genius. That's what I thought. I was like, oh my God. Like he's, I mean, because I knew it. I was like, Jason was so talented when we met him as a kid. This album's kind of a a butterfly moment for him, right? When he came out of. Yeah. It's like, yeah, uh, like, yeah. Gaffney quit the band. So he kind of took this sort of psychic weight away from away with him because mm-hmm. we were dark it was just a much darker environment and eric was really like the he was the the punk rock he was the aggressive foil to my sort of pop tendencies and mm. and jason was drifting somewhere out somewhere in between and for instance if you were to open the the bake sale the bake sale cover like we all for the cover of this record we all picked one picture Mm-hmm. for the record cover because I was like it should be one of these gatefold CDs like these new I really love Digi-pack. these this kind of CD packaging I think it makes a lot of sense like so I chose a, like a creep, creepy family photograph Jason which then the story is I chose a creepy family photograph and I chose the bake sale cover of me reaching into the toilet as a baby for the for the cover of the skull single uh-huh. but when Sub Pop saw this picture they said Lou this the That's naked the, cover. Ba- the naked baby reaching into the toilet must be the cover and i was like fair enough so the the creepy family photograph became the cover of skull the baby became the cover of the bake sale record okay on the back cover is bob fay and this is really cute this is an old picture of him he's on the far left and he's uh-huh. got he's got a He's got a red ribbon on. So this is like his third. Is that third place? Yes. (laughs) So he has a third place ribbon. And he chose this picture because this this record did feel like we were being awarded somehow. We were really happy with this record. Mm. You know, so I think and we called it bake sale because we were just getting delightfully stoned and <laughs> and appreciating our own work it's cute that the out the pictures of both are like old you yeah know, so it yeah really he chose it and but but so jason cute. chose for his picture and it's in the inside Did of this uh, the cd Did thing is, it's from a national geographic and it looks mm. like it's an indian man balancing on a, on a balancing tight on a tightrope Mm. And the reason that he chose this picture was this is how he felt in the band, that he was always balancing on a tightrope mm. in the band. And that's where he felt like he was. And he certainly, that was certainly the case with Eric in the band. Mm. Because Eric was always whispering in his ear and I was talking to Jay. He was really like, we were triangulating. Eric and I did not really speak. Jason was really stuck in the middle. Mm. So this really demonstrates that. And I, I, anyway, so I think for me, it was like, we, it was like a lot of things. It was like, it was the right time. Mm -hmm. We caught Jason at the right moment. He was like, it was, uh, his sweet side. These songs are so Jason. Like Mm -hmm. they just Mm -hmm. really, they, they get his, no one else could have wrote those. They get his side eye. They get his side eye. They get his, they get his, uh, it really captures all of that and showed, and it has, I was just dumbstruck about how, how full the songs were and how simple they were. Um, and that Tara Jane had played drums on them. Mm-hmm. And so beautiful, like so simply and beautifully, mm-hmm. I, I was just totally blown away. So this, mm-hmm. this record really is, as far as I'm concerned, it like really, it really belongs to Jason. I really, his songs are the most worldly, the most like, uh, they're the most uh, timeless, I would say. I think my songs are really good, and I love playing my songs. 
But yeah. th- these are not the definitive versions. I love to live in these songs when I play them. Mm. I don't love to listen to them as I recorded them in uh-huh. 1993 yeah. and early 1994. But wow. So that's it. Bake sale. It's the end of Mini Music Monday from Raw Impressions. Thank you for listening.